So I'm sure that we're all on the same page or hopefully are in regards to cheating in Warzone, in Call of Duty, or in any game really. And if you're somebody who can't stand running into cheaters, then the last 24 hours may have provided some good news. And maybe we'd even consider a rare Activision W perhaps if you want to frame it that way. Today we're talking a bit about the recently filed lawsuit against one of the biggest, if not the biggest cheat providers in Warzone and what it's doing for the community already. I'll let you in on a little secret. It's already scaring off other cheat developers who've since announced that they're closing shop. So as you go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Good, bad, what's your take on this? If you enjoyed the video or the news of stopping cheaters at the source, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to stay the day with all things Warzone, Vanguard, and Modern Warfare 2 here in 2022. If you're part of that nearly 70% of viewers who are not subscribed and you'd like to stay up to date with everything, all while helping us out on that road to half a million subscribers, I'd love to have you in the community. That said, let's jump into it. So let's start at the beginning. Verdansk and Verdansk 84 were rife with cheaters. I'd wager that at one point, every other game my squad played, we encountered a cheater. I'd say it got really bad maybe around the tail end of summer of 2020, and then it really escalated in Cold War with the integration and beyond. The last couple of months leading up to Caldera was just ridiculous in terms of the amount of cheaters that you'd see. Now, in that time, we'd see ban waves intermittently announcing that we'd have tens of thousands of accounts banned, but since day one, we were all really saying, well, so what? I mean, you have a free-to-play game, and you can get around that by making a new account and cheating all over again. Along the way, there were things introduced like SMS verification methods for Required and other things, but your common spoofers would be able to get around that. So it was really all just small speed bumps for the cheaters. But the message that echoed the whole time was, stop being reactive, introduce something preventative. Stop it before it happens rather than react to it after it happens. Or at least that's what I felt like I was screaming into the void for months on end. That's where Ricochet came into play, which was detailed to be a kernel level driver and something that had been machine learning from what appeared to be our torture enduring these cheaters for the last year or so. And there was a living, breathing amalgamation of cheats out there and a way to stop them dead in their tracks. Unfortunately, that was delayed by about a week as it was soft launched when it was intended to fully launch only in Asian and Pacific regions. Then a week later, globally, it came to the world for the reasoning that they wanted to make sure the structural integrity was sound, which I'm all for. If something breaks and royally screws up a game or even worse, people's personal hardware, you don't want the entire world to have that same problem all at once as opposed to maybe a smaller number containing that a little bit while you test everything and make sure it all works. So a week delay, I was okay with that. Admittedly, though, playing at a higher level of competition, playing quite a bit, when this was released, I noticed immediately a lack of cheaters, which was definitely refreshing. To be able to learn a new map without having to consider, damn, I might get fried by a dude spinning in circles shooting at the ground from 2,000 meters away. Now, the numbers of cheaters is definitely starting to pop up again. I've seen a few here already, and that's something with the anti-cheat that I want to come back to. It was a living, breathing machine that learns and adapts as time goes on. It won't stop everything because as new cheats are developed, it's not recognized on a technical red flag level. It's kind of like if you get sick with a new strain of anything. Your immune system, in this case, Ricochet is trained to look for repeat offenders, but if there's something brand new that it doesn't recognize, it has no way to stop it until it's alerted of an offense. So cheats no doubt will be present in some capacity, but the anti-cheat stopping them upon startup is something that has already had success. But the future, that's where the trouble lies. And that's where the news of this lawsuit comes into play, because announced yesterday, Activision filed a lawsuit against Engineoting, who is one of the largest cheat distributors in the scene, citing severe damage to the company and its IP, seeking restitution in the way of seizing all revenue revenue made from the cheat sales in the US and $2,500 in damage for each violation while additionally looking to shut down the development of cheats for Overwatch in addition to Warzone. So that's a lot to digest, but the biggest takeaway for me is that they're going after the source. Anti-cheat, as we just mentioned, is a learning tool that detects what is known, but if it doesn't, it can't detect it and stop it immediately. But if you go for the cheats creators from even making new ones, then there's nothing really going to be out there in the first place. Shutting down the operation is truly the purest form of anti-cheat. So to go after them directly is massive. And for perspective, the big part about this is the 2,500 in damages per violation. Not just overall, but every single cheat that was detected and then banned, that's $2,500 every time. To date, it's been reported that we've seen half a million accounts banned in Warzone. So if you do the math, that's an absurd amount of money totaling like a whopping $1.25 billion, but that's not likely the case. Activision has claimed in their lawsuit that they have banned tens of thousands of users who've sourced their cheats from engine owning. 
So on the conservative side of things here, a minimum of 10,000 users banned. If awarded by the courts at that maximum amount requested, that would then run a bill of $25 million for engine owning. With a ceiling still listed in the tens of thousands, let's just say that max is 99,999 accounts, just one shy of that 100,000 mark. That would then total just shy of $250 million in damages. So I don't know much about the company's structure of engine owning, honestly don't care enough to look them up, anything about them, but whether it's one guy making cheats in his mom's basement or hundreds of people, both the minimal amount requested or the maximum will utterly annihilate their operation. To which I have one thing to say, good, let it burn, screw them. But the next big hurdle comes down to how quickly will this happen and if it will happen at all. To which tackling that last part, even though it's listed as engine owning as an entity outside of the US, there's still precedence to follow through with this lawsuit and to see action come of it. In 2017, Blizzard won in German courts in a similar case against cheat provider Bossland, who was making World of Warcraft cheats. The case sang to the tune of $8.6 million and seems to have even been charged on a lesser count here, with that case seeking only $200 per violation. So what's rather interesting and also doesn't help them out at all is that it seems like even before this, Activision for the last year and a half or so had formally requested via cease and desist that engine owning cease operations in cheat creation, but because it was thought to be exempt due to the international air quote technicality, they ignored the request, which now culminated in a massive lawsuit. So kind of just defying any legal action here, which may cause some more serious implications at that point, but also still culminating in the fact they can't get away from this lawsuit. So it seems like this can and likely will be held up in courts, but then that brings into the question, the timing and how long this will take. And that's where things get tricky. Court cases can be anything from open and shut and done in a few days to drag on for months to years in cases like this. Now, I didn't pass the bar exam. My legal knowledge is minimal. I mean, I've watched the entirety of Suits from USA Network, so I know some terms in lingo, but I won't even pretend to say that I can give you an estimate on these things. But maybe just if we're lucky, this also, while we're waiting, decreases the amount of cheat updates we see from engine owning in particular as the filings go on, ultimately before hopefully bankrupting and cutting off the source directly. One nice thing though is that even if all things fail here with this, which I'm hopeful that we won't see this fail, I'm hopeful in time we will see these all cut off, but one nice thing is that this has already seemingly scared off other cheap providers, with it being reported that another developer, Cynical Software, announced via their public Telegram channel today that they're stopping COD-related cheats and hack sales immediately because they don't want to be in the crossfire and see this come across their desks as well. So again, good take them all down, whether directly or indirectly. So that's where we're at here at this. The war on cheats wages on, and it seems like this might be another big step in the right direction, cutting the source off directly. So that's where I leave you with this. What do you think of this? Do you think it will be something that amounts to shutting down engine owning's operation for Call of Duty entirely? Do you think it will be something that fails? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, all things Vanguard, and in the future here, Modern Warfare 2 content as we gear up to 2022. But if you're interested in any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.